All right, welcome back to Pragmatic Agility in this lesson. Well, in the previous lesson, what we did is we, um, we installed Notepad++, we installed Git Bash Shell, we set up our Vagrant using the config file as well as a script file. We went through that installation process. If all went well, you should be sitting on your computer with a Vagrant uh, guest host running. And you can verify that by looking at your Oracle Box software and see that you have a host running. Now, by default, your networking set, your network settings are going to aim 127.0.0.1, which is localhost, to your um, Vagrant machine that's running. Um, there is a way to change that in the Vagrant file, but we're not going to worry about that. That is something you will have to look into if you try to run multiple Vagrants at the same time. So let's go ahead and open up dBeaver and see if we can connect to our MySQL database. Okay, dBeaver has opened. I'm going to go ahead and go and select all. I can't use MySQL 8 plus. That driver apparently has a problem with it. So we need to go ahead and just use MySQL. We'll get a date stamp doesn't match error, something along those lines. The solution is just to use the generic MySQL driver. So next, localhost, that's right, root. And what was that password we put in the file? It was pragmatic agility. So, not database, but password. Pragmatic agility. Test connection. Download the driver. The first time you connect to a... Okay, I was able to get success, but I had to go and change a couple of things. I had to add a couple of commands to our shell file and I had to rerun Vagrant Provision. So these are the two lines I added. Basically, I'm saying to create a user root, even though a root user already exists, identified by the password that I set at the top. And the next is I'm granting all privileges to this root at wildcard with the grant option. Now, we need this wildcard because this is saying that root can log in remotely from any location. Now, of course, you would never do that in a production environment. This is strictly for development only. And if... Uh, if you ever do deploy it to a production environment, you will definitely want to make sure that you turn on all the appropriate security protocols. But for development on your local machine, it's fine to do that. So the way, so once you've saved that, if you don't want to wait for this other stuff to run, it won't do anything if you let it run, but you could comment it out like this. And you just hold Alt and drag the mouse up, and then you can edit multiple lines at the same time. But and then once you're ready, you just type in Vagrant prov Provision, and it'll run those commands. And then hopefully when you click to test the connection, you'll be okay. Now to just quickly go over, well, let me go ahead and finish this connection. Uh, no. Uh, close. So once we're connected, I'll expand the databases. These are the default databases that come with MySQL that handle special uh, attributes of the database. So I'm going to right click, create new database, type in the word test, click OK. And um, so I can create a database in the new database or in my database connection. So this is all working. OK, let's go ahead and import a database and see if we can get that working. Go ahead and go to uh, mysqltutorial.org slash mysql dash sample dash database dot aspx. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to click here. I'm going to go ahead and save that. I'm going to open folder. Go ahead and delete all these extra ones. I'm going to go ahead and extract all. Okay. I'm going to go back into dBeaver. I'm going to right click on that test database I made. I'm going to select tools, execute script, select this little folder icon, go to my downloads, MySQL database, MySQL sample, start. It says it finished. 
let's go ahead and left click on databases right click select refresh there's the database we just imported classic models I'm gonna set that as my active I'm gonna go ahead and expand the tables double click on the employees look at the data make sure there's some data there there appears to be so it appears the import did it run successfully so that pretty much completes getting MySQL up and running on a virtual machine running on a local host. Hope you found this content useful. If you did, like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next lesson.